Hello, gothic literature lovers and horror fans. I am J.S. Laramore, a.k.a. Jax. And today I am all by myself in the studio, but hopefully that doesn't stop me from entertaining you. So without further ado, welcome to Ravens and Writing Desks. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me on Ravens and Writing Desks. As you can see today, obviously, I'm in the studio by myself. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. One is I had some scheduling issues with some guests I want to have on. Um, so I scheduled them a few weeks out. But that made me realize that I kind of wanted to take this week as an opportunity to um, spend some time actually scheduling different guests because what I really want to do here at Ravens and Writing Desks is diversify my guest list. And um, I've had a lot of writers and authors, particularly of the horror genre and the gothic lit genre, um, which is great. That's what my show is about. But I also want to diversify with other authors. Yes, but also with other creators. So um, exciting news. I have some uh, really great artists coming on uh, and episodes coming up next month. Um, I'm looking to bring on more artists, more creatives, more podcasters. So if you are watching, you're subscribed and you're an artist or maybe you're a cosplayer, you're a poet, you're um, in video games, any kind of creative at all. Message me, email me at jslaramore um, 32112 at gmail.com. I'll link that in the description. Let me know you want to come on the show. Let's talk about your work. Let's talk about our shared interests. I want to hear from you. I'm looking to diversify my uh, guests and um, get your name out there. We're all looking to get our work out to people that want to see it, that want to buy it, that want to take it in. So, message me and let's work together to get our work out there. So like I was saying, I have some really great people coming on in the coming weeks and um, fantastic artists who go to cons and sell their art at all these big cons and uh, great authors. Um, we have some collaborating authors coming on, just really exciting stuff coming up. Um, I can't wait for them to come on. I'm really excited about it. We're in negotiations right now for scheduling. That should be uh, the episode in the first of July or the first or the second week of July, actually. So um, after that, I'm working on scheduling some more exciting people and growing the show. As you guys know, I'm trying to hit um, a sub goal so far. I've grown some. It's going really great. And you guys have been really awesome in helping me make that happen. If I do reach my sub goal, which is 500 subs by the end of August, before the 1st of September, I will host a live stream and I will give away some of my books. If you don't know, I have a completed fantasy trilogy called the Wilder series. The first book in the series is called Gaia Mundi. Um, so if I hit my sub goal, I will hold a live show and I will give away signed copies of my trilogy, maybe signed copies of my poetry collection. It's called A Theater Strange, uh, bearing my thoughts on the stage. It's a dark poetry collection of some gothic poetry, some horror poetry. Um, I might give away a copy of that. Uh, then maybe some of my cosplay art. I have, uh, I do what I like to call trash art. It's uh, where I upcycle cardboard and I do paper mache and I just do stuff that I find around the house or I save that's recycling stuff and I create um, cosplay items out of it. Mushroom hats, devil horns, prosthetics for my cosplay so i probably give away some some of that stuff um maybe some original art I, I also draw so yeah i'll be sharing some of that on my twitter if you want to see some of my cosplay art and some of uh, my creations i'll be sharing that 
it's all during the summer on Twitter. You can look me up at twi- on Twitter at jacks 2 underscore zero. Uh, if you want to see that, give me a follow. Um, I share pictures daily. Um, that was another thing I really want to have some cosplayers on. So if you guys cosplay, ma- email me, like I said, at jslaremore32112 at gmail.com. Um, I'm a makeup artist. Cosplay is a huge passion of mine. I am actually prepping to go to Comic-Con here in my stay in August. It'll be my first Comic-Con. I'm super excited. Um, I plan to cosplay as Apple from Turbo Kid. If you haven't seen Turbo Kid, I highly recommend it. It's my favorite movie. You can find it on Peacock. Um, And I think you can rent it on Prime. Don't quote me on that. You used to be able to. I know I bought it on there, but it's definitely on Peacock. Um, It is a horror, sci-fi, gore fest of just wholesome awesomeness check it out it's amazing but um apple is one of the main characters and that's who i plan to cosplay for comic-con and i'm really excited i should have had pictures up for you guys to see but she is uh just adorable and amazing and my favorite character well next to the main character who's just called the kid he doesn't have a name he's just called the kid but yeah, that's who I'm going to co- uh, cosplay on. as for my first Comic-Con. I'm super excited. So I'll be doing that in August. Um, so if you have any uh, tips, tricks, safety uh, advice, or just well wishes for my first Comic-Con, go ahead and leave those in the comments. And maybe you have some fun stories from your Comic-Cons. I want to hear all about it. Tell, about, tell me in the comments. Um, I just, I need to know what, what do I need to know before I go to my first con? Leave me a comment below. Tell me what I need to know. Tell me some of your favorite stories or your favorite cosplays that you've done for Comic-Con or that you've seen at Comic-Con. Tell me all about it. I want to hear it. I'm really excited before, probably after that, because Comic-Con's the first weekend in August. Um, We're also going to check out the Van Gogh interactive exhibit it's coming to my state so i'm really excited about that um lots of fun stuff planned for this summer um as well as more podcasts more guests probably lots of horror movie watching every wednesday me and my friends get together on prime and do a watch party and we watch some horrible but amazing (laughs) horror movie. I know you guys have heard me talk about this before, but I love bad horror movies. They're my favorite. Um, Like Velocipastor, uh, Lamageddon. Those are some of my very favorite really bad horror movies that are just awesome. So uh, we watch those every Wednesday. So I'm excited tomorrow, but I think, um, I'm not sure what we're watching tomorrow actually. I think that we had thrown around Shaun of the Dead as a rewatch, but we'll see. I don't know. Maybe sometimes when I come on here by myself, I can start doing some movie reviews. Um, I know I was definitely thinking about doing that on my TikTok. If you don't, if you haven't checked out my TikTok yet, you can check me out on TikTok at Jack's the Tiny Raptor, all one word. Um, I laugh every time I, I say my TikTok on here. Um, so the story with that is via that movie group, we all bought onesie pajamas at one time and mine is a raptor. So there you go. And I'm really short. (laughs) Jack's the tiny raptor became a nickname and it was my Twitter handle for a long time. So now it is my TikTok handle and my gamer tag and, uh, yeah, just a big part of my identity, I guess. <laughs> so I have some of my cosplay pictures to share with you guys since I was going on and on about Comic-Con. These are just a few of my favorite makeup looks that I've done in the past. Um, This is 
Cupid on the left, and I did that for Valentine's Day. Um, believe it or not, like I said, I was a trash. I'm a trash artist. Trash artist. Those wings I'm wearing, I made out of soda and beer boxes and craft feathers and just a horrendous amount of hot glue. So, <laughs> and the shirt I have on in these pictures is com. Well, one half of it is a nightgown, and the sleeves are held on and held together with safety pins because I didn't feel like sewing them when I made them. So, completely held together by safety pins. And uh, on the right is just uh, an elf, I guess, or an elf that had a bad accident. <laughs> I really like doing gore makeup, as you can see. So wounds and uh, prosthetics are kind of my favorite thing. I did this today. This is Coraline. Um, I was going to do Alice in Wonderland today, but when I went to the store the other day to buy clothes for my cosplay, I left the bag with the clothes in them at the store. So I have to go back when I have time to get them so they can do the cosplay originally planned. But I had all this stuff on hand, so I did this instead since I promised to do a cosplay today. So, um, yep. Here's a couple of uh, really creepy horror looks. Last week we uh, tried to, tra or last episode we tried to traumatize everybody with some clown phobias. So let's do it one more time this week. <laughs> Uh, this is a jack-in-the-box. That was a lot of fun. It's one of my favorites. Um, I just love the forced perspective on it. So um, the jack-in-the-box is just painted on my neck and then painted black all the way around. And then, of course, Jason or uh, my rendition of half Jason, half glam makeup. And then the last one I have here is... Um, these are some of my very first looks. So I've only been doing this for about two years. Um, it started out as I decided to be the Cheshire Cat for Halloween. And so I practiced and practiced to get the mouth right. And uh, I became a hyper fixation of mine. And I just kept going. So these are some of the first looks I did, especially this doll look here. Um... She's kind of busted and falling apart, her eyes hanging, and then this creepy clown once again. Sorry about the clowns. I really love clowns, and doing clown makeup is one of my favorite things. It's super fun. Uh, there's a lot of things you can play with when you're doing clown makeup. A lot of ways to make them creepy or super cute. Um hairstyles hair colors different wigs it's just clowns for cosplay and for makeup it's just a never-ending um, supply of versions you can do of clowns so they're a lot of fun in terms of doing makeup so I really like them for that that's not the only reason but that's the reason I like them in in terms of cosplay is because they're so versatile and you can do so many things with them. They're so much fun. So yeah, that's some of my cosplay. So if you're a cosplayer, I would love for you to message me. I will also be looking for some of my mutuals in the future or in weeks to come to come on the show and talk makeup and techniques and cons and the ins and outs of cosplay. So um, if you're one of my mutuals and we've talked about cosplay, hit me up on my socials or email me. I would love to have somebody who like me is in the craft and would like to talk about it. So that's something I really, really want to get on the show. Also, um, if you're a big horror movie fan, I really love to talk horror movies. I could do it all day long. So if you're somebody who's a movie buff, come on. We can talk about our top 10 favorite horror movies, our top 10 least favorite horror movies um, for days. I don't know. I could come up with 100 topics to talk about horror movies with you about. 
So the or the people that I could you could message me to come on the show is endless. Um, I just want creatives and people who are uh, enthusiastic about creating art and music and movies and books and people who are passionate about music and movies and art and books. That's what the show's about and that's what I'm looking for. Um, unfortunately, since I am by myself today, this episode's not going to be very long. I do have a quiz that I'm going to do because I usually do a game with my guests. And if I'm my guest, I should do a game. If that makes sense, <laughs> I'm rambling, but so I have a quiz I can do. Um, I'm just trying to push the time just a little bit. So it's not, I'm not cheating you guys out of an episode. Um, I did want to talk about my books since I usually discuss other people's books and I almost never discuss mine. So like I said, I have this um, trilogy. It's an urban fantasy trilogy or magical realism, whichever way you want to put it. It is new adult, so it's not YA. All the characters are adults. Um, it follows the main character, Alvina Vaughn, as she... Um, spends her whole life wishing she could be magical or that she, her boring life could become more magical only to find out when she turns 25 that that's exactly who she is so she enters a world of magic and um it's hidden inside her own community and she tries to navigate that as her powers as she learns to use her powers and she learns what her powers are and how she to navigate them and how to control them and there's some twists and turns and there's bad guys um and she she has to try to evolve from this introverted shy girl who's always felt invisible in her life to become someone stronger someone who can trust her instincts and who can save herself and save her friends. So if that sounds interesting to you, you can find them on Amazon under J.S. Laramore. Um, some other things you'll find in the book are um, weaved in mythology, not just Greek mythology, but world mythology, Celtic mythology, Egyptian mythology, um, just all through the world. You'll find mythical beasts, um, some you know, some you don't know, some new, some old. Um, you'll find a lot of action scenes, battle scenes, and obviously a ton of magic just throughout. So if that sounds interesting to you, check them out. They're on Amazon in um, paperback, Kindle, and on Kindle Unlimited. Um, check them out. They've been out for about three years, so the, the trilogy's completed. Um, other than that, I just have some short stories published with Quill and Crow Publishing House. And um, I have a short story published with Band of Bards that I believe you can get on their website now. It should be out for publishing. The anthology is called uh, The Dark Side of Purity. And my short story is called Set It Free. And then I have a poem called damaged goods in the same anthology um i have some short stories with quill and crow which i've mentioned before in grim and dread i have a short story called what's in a name and it's a rumpelstiltskin retelling that entire book is really great because it's all fairy tale retellings uh grim the grim brothers fairy tales so if you like fairy tale retellings it's really interesting and that might be something you'd be you would want to pick up and all of these you can get at Quill and Crow or at thecrowshop.com. And that's S-H-O-P-P-E. -P -E. And um, I have a short story in Haunted. It's called I Thought It Was You. And I have another one in Um... um Bleak Midwinter, Volume 2, Solstice Light, and it's called Black is the Hour. 
Um, that is a black eyed children's story that is really creepy and sad and about it's about grief and loss and uh, isolation so check that out i'm really proud of that one so those are all my writing projects that i have out right now i'm working on a horror short story collection it does not have a name at the moment and it uh it does not have a release date yet i'm working on that Oh, it does have a name. I'm sorry. It's called All the Things You Cannot See. It does have a title. So um, cover art for that will be released or will be previewed on Twitter some point in the near future when I get a little more of the book completed. And then um, when I move forward further with that, some pre-sales will go out. So that project is coming along. And I will keep you updated on Twitter and on TikTok and Instagram about that. So that's all of the updates I have to give you right now and all the information I have to give you about myself. So I think I'll just, I'm going to go ahead and take this quiz and see how I do. This is a horror movie trivia quiz. So let's see. All right, what classic horror movie features a serial killer in a William Shatner mask? I think I thought it was Halloween. I I was like, I think that's supposed to be William Shatner. It's not a very good one. (laughs) In which horror movie does the protagonist write a book that contains only the line, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy? That one's almost too easy. That's one of my favorite serious horror movies. And it's a comfort watch for me. I watch it all the time. What classic horror movie was originally titled The Babysitter Murders? Um, Probably Halloween. How many people associated with The Exorcist died during production? I think so. Oh. All right, first one wrong. What horror film was the first movie to show a woman in just a bra and slip? Oh, probably Psycho. What color is Freddy Krueger's sweater? Duh. Some of these are super easy, but some of them are kind of hard. How many people does Jason kill in the first... <laughs> Tricky, tricky. Jason does not kill any. In Scream, what is the number one rule on Randy's list of rules for surviving a horror movie? Don't say, oh, is it? Don't drink or do drugs, I think. Damn it. Those are my favorite slasher movies. I'm so embarrassed. What horror movie required the purchase of 500 Florida frogs and 100 giant South American toads? I'm guessing the frog. I mean, but that seemed too obvious. What was the original title of the blob? The glob? They should have left it as the glob. Oops. What what horror movie features a serial killer wearing a mask inspired by an Edward Munch painting? That's obviously Scream. What horror film caused some theaters to suggest that patrons prone to motion sickness sit in the aisle seats probably vertigo oh the Blair Witch Project maybe in Poltergeist what grabs Robbie Freeling through his bedroom window Uh, it was a tree right how much screen time does Freddy Krueger get first 
21 minutes? 14 minutes. Where does Friday the 13th do? I almost picked one, the wrong one on accident. Camp Crystal Lake. That is the name of my farm on Stardew Valley. Crystal Lake Farm. Why can't Michael Myers be killed? Because it's uh, ridiculous. I don't know why. I'm not a big fan of Halloween. I don't know if I've made that uh, clear on the show. I feel like I have, but Halloween's just not one of my favorite franchises. What child actress was originally offered the role of Megan McNeil in The Exorcist? I believe Carrie. Oh, nope. Which horror movie was filmed in just seven days? This one. Paranormal Activity. What was the first horror film nominated for a Best Picture Oscar? Silence of the Lambs? No, probably The Exorcist. First two Hellraiser films, how many actors played Frank Cotton? Three. I'm doing actually better than I thought I was, guys. Or I thought I would. What is the name of the apartment building Guy and Rosemary move into in Rosemary's Baby? I've seen Rosemary's Baby, but I was inappropriately young. And I haven't seen it since. So this is just going to be a guess. Ooh, good guess. In honor of Bram Stoker, that makes sense. Who is responsible for releasing the deadly virus in 28 days later? Oh, we were just talking about this movie earlier today. So I'm not really a big fan of serious zombie movies, only because I find zomb the whole premise of zombies just silly and ridiculous so it's really hard for me to be scared by a zombie movie i really love comedy zombie movies um my favorites being anna and the apocalypse and doghouse if you haven't seen either one of them either one of them you should definitely see them doghouse is just hilarious and creative as hell and you sh you have to see it like it's just too good and then obviously Anna and Apocalypse is a musical so it kind of stands alone in its own genre and for it being a horror comedy the music is surprisingly well produced and the lyrics are amazing and catchy and you just have to sing along while you're watching it it's also my eight-year-old's favorite movie so <laughs> definitely check out Anna and the Apocalypse And Carrie, what do the other students dump on Carrie at prom? Pig's blood. Carrie and the remake of Carrie with, um, I just forgot her name. But, um, the 2000 remake are both excellent. Why were most of Colin Clive's scenes in Bride of Frankenstein shot with him sitting? Uh, he had a broken leg. Which room does Dick Halloran tell Danny to stay away from in The Shining? Room 237. Whose skin does Kirsty wear in Hellbound? Hellraiser 2. Ooh, I don't know. Frank? No. I'm still working my way through. Like, I've seen the first Hellraiser, so don't come at me, but um, I'm working my way through all the like 80s, 90s horror movies from when I was a little kid and shouldn't be watching horror movies, and Hellraiser, I haven't made it through all of them yet. What is Norman's hobby in Psycho? Pet 
taxidermy stuffs his mother, doesn't he? What happens to Damien's first nanny in the omen? She disappears or hangs herself. I haven't seen Damien in a long time. Who speaks to Isaac in Children of the Corn? He who walks behind the rose. Okay, Isaac is so creepy. But Malachi is so much worse. <laughs> Isaac relates the prophecy of a demon called he who walks behind the rose. Why would they put those two questions right next to each other? Oh, wait, sorry. I rewrote. Never mind. What was Pinhead's human name? I don't know. Gerald? Yeah, I was never going to get that. Like I said, I'm still working through those. What is unusual about the videotape The Ring? Uh, I forget. It doesn't have a time code. It can be copied because they have to make copies, right? They make copies in the movie. What does the Native American shaman give Stephen Poltergeist to? I have no idea. Who is the only character to appear in and survive all four Jaws movies? Um, don't know, guys. I only seen the first Jaws movie. Okay. So. Where do I get my results? I guess that's it. How many diamonds? Let's see. Oh, great. Okay, well. I guess that's it, guys. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope I was at least half in as entertaining by myself as I am with a guest. I hope you enjoyed the show um, and watching me kind of fail at the horror trivia. Like I said, I'm still watching some of the older horror movies. Um, I'm working on it. I was just a little kid, guys. Cut me some slack. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like this video, and hit that notification button because I have some great guests coming up and you're not going to want to miss them. So um, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and thank you for joining me on Ravens and Writing Desks.